Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street here in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and you can join me and make sure you do each and every week at this time on this station. For all things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. And remember, you can always contact me, contact the office, 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. At the Clark Law Firm, my focus is on property owner, land owner, oil and gas right owner representation. Please remember... I have not, I do not, and I will not, never represent gas or pipeline companies. I represent the Pennsylvania property owner and oil and gas right owner. And the truth be told, look, it stems, you know, I grew up, I say this sometimes, grew up on the airport road in Armstrong County, my grandfather's farm on the dime road in Armstrong County, where I I grew up, look, wringing pigs' noses, getting cow shots, picking them up, taking fixing fences, all the different things, bailing hay, combining those, you name it, any typical small farm operation, that's what I did growing up, and that's how I grew up, and it is a privilege. It is an absolute privilege that I have to represent my clients who, like my grandfather, like my grandmother, like my father, who care for their land greatest asset in their family, has been in the family for generations, and I have the unique opportunity to assist and help people. I love it. It's what we do, and I'm going to keep doing it. That's who I am, and that's why I will not ever, ever, don't care, play it back a thousand times. I will never, ever represent gas or pipeline companies. I am here for you, you, the property owner and the landowner. And remember, you can contact the office, learn more what we do anytime, 570-307-0702. I represent landowners, property owners, gas right owners for such things as, including but not limited to, gas lease negotiations, gas lease reviews, consultations, issues of breaches of your gas lease. Did your gas lease terminate? Did the company breach your gas lease? Pipeline agreements, pipeline negotiations, pipeline reviews and consultations, surface use agreements, royalty, royalty deduction issues, water lines, roadways, meter sites, compressor sites, buying and selling oil and gas rights. If you have anything to do with oil and gas and you're looking for representation, you can give us a call, find out what we do and see if we can help you. You'll hear me talk about these reviews and consultations. I do them all the time, and we do them by telephone. Clients sometimes are located literally in other countries, but they have property or gas rights in Pennsylvania, located in other portions of Pennsylvania, and even across the country. So we do these by telephone. We do them in person. Whatever works for you. Do not, please do not be afraid to call and learn what we do and see if we can help you. I, we are so proud. We are so proud of the people that we've helped and we're going to continue to do it. And always, look, if you're not even looking for representation, join us each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus. If you're new to the show, I have been doing the show since 2010 been doing all things Marcellus to get you the information you need to become more informed from our side, the landowner side. So since August of 2010, I've been doing all things Marcellus each week. And good news for us, maybe not so good for the gas and pipeline companies, but we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep doing it. And this is a good time to remind you, again, if you're new to this or if you haven't been there, and I talk to people and it surprises me that sometimes people haven't gone to our websites whether you're looking for representation or quality information, go check out the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com and pipelineattorney.com. Two different sites. Think about it. And there's so much information there. And today's radio show will be up and available tomorrow, 
Monday morning, you can go to the website and listen to today's show. By the way, you heard me say I've been doing the show since 2010. Seven years, over seven years I've been doing the show. There are many, many hours of radio shows available on the websites. Go check it out. If you're interested in, ga- in buying and selling gas rights, pipelines, lease negotiations, lease amendments, modifications, compressor sites, you name it, there's going to be a show on the websites that you should be listening to. Get information. And always remember, look, the radio show and the websites are not specific advice for any person, but it's information to get you thinking to have you more informed and always my specific advice on the radio show is to get specific advice for your situation. I can't say this enough. What is right for your neighbor may not be right for you. Get specific advice. If there's one thing I could keep pounding over and over, it would be that we need to get specific advice. Now, I say that in the meantime, I'm thinking about 20 other things I want to pound in over and over. Like, let's stop signing bad agreements. Let's remember that the land man works for the company, not us, not you, the land owner. But for now, let's say, and we'll come back to the others. But for now, let's say, remember, get specific advice, even if it's not me. And I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to help you out. I'd love to see if I can help you out. If I can help you out, we'll tell you, hey, look, unfortunately, we can't help you out. But if we can, we will. And it'll be our privilege and pleasure to do so. But remember, if it's not me, make sure you are getting specific advice and make sure you're getting specific advice from someone who knows what they're doing. No offense to divorce lawyers, but not a divorce lawyer. No offense to realty lawyers or real estate lawyers, but... They may not be the best people to get oil and gas advice for. These contracts are complicated. You need to understand development. You need to understand history, oil and gas law, in order to do the best you can for your situation. So whether it's me, give us a call, 570-307-0702, or someone else who knows what they're doing. Get assistance. These are very powerful legal contracts that will survive Many cases, decades upon decades, and even over a hundred years. And sometimes even literally a couple hundred years or more, forever. So before we sign, we're going to make sure that we understand what we're doing, that we have maximized the financial compensation. In other words, that we get all the money we can get for that agreement and that we protect the property and limit what the company can do in the future. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am here with you each and every week at this time on this station. And remember, you can call the office, learn more about what we do, and see if we're right for you. 570-307-0702. All right, let's get into it. So let me tell you, I'm excited. I'm excited because I... As crazy as this may sound, I love this topic. And we talked last week about pipeline, option agreements, interaction with landmen. We're going to go deeper. You know, This is like the deeper cuts of what we talked about last week. And we're going to really get into, I'm going to get into this option agreement. Now, again, remember, you may say, well, I don't have a pipeline agreement. Well, you may have one in the future. And maybe you have one already that may expire. Or boy, if you're in Tioga County, you better stay tuned. Stay tuned because this is going to be very, I think, enlightening. And we want to pay attention. But it also, if nothing else, gives us general intelligence as to how companies operate, how these agreements are written, and what we need to watch out for. So if we can point out problems with a pipeline agreement or a gas lease, we need to be aware that, hey... Just because that may not be in my particular area of Pennsylvania, or maybe because this is a roadway agreement and I'm dealing with a pipeline, or this is a pipeline agreement and I'm dealing with a lease, all of this stuff is relevant to understand how companies operate. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So let's start. We're going to set up the option agreement and explain that, and then we're going to get into some details 
on a particular or in a particular option agreement. So, okay, what is an option agreement? Most, the vast majority of pipeline right-of-way agreements in Pennsylvania are option agreements. And that means that the company, not you, the company has an option to either use the agreement some point in the future or not use the agreement. So what does that mean? It means that when you're given a pipeline right-of-way agreement, it is typically, in most cases, the vast majority of cases, going to be an option agreement, meaning that if you sign today, typically the company is going to give you an upfront payment within, and we'll call that the option payment, within usually about 30 days. So what do we want to do? We want to make sure we get as much money as we can up front. That seems like common sense. So we have an option agreement. So let's say that the company is going to give you $2,000 up front and you'll be paid that money if you sign the option agreement. You'll be paid that money within 30 days. Well, you, you hear about pipeline agreements. Well, yeah, I get 20, 25, $30 a foot, $50 a foot, $60 a foot, whatever that number may be. Well, if you're given $2,000 up front, you may be asking, well, how does that come into play about that per foot price? Well, here's the way that works. Again, and this is something that you got to understand. It's important that when you have an option agreement, you're going to get some money up front. Now, I use $2,000. I'm going to tell you probably most of our clients get that, sometimes more, some get less, but we want to get that price as high as we can, and we always want to try to have that price so we're more than covering any legal fees that you may incur. Well, why are we doing that? Because company gives you money up front, whether it be $500, $600, $2,000, or $10,000. They give you that money up front, and that's yours no matter what. However, if the company goes ahead and what's called exercises the option or says, yes, we're going to go ahead and put a pipeline in on your property. Well, now they have to pay you that subsequent, that per foot price. And that's typically called the exercise of option payment. So summarize, you're going to be given $2,000 up front when you sign a document within 30 days. Then the company has usually anywhere between two to five years to decide whether they're going to actually use the agreement. Now, I said two to five years. Five years, in my opinion, outrageous, outrageous. We don't, I don't typically do any option agreements for more than two years. And sometimes, you know, a lot of times, they're less than that. So you want to remember, <laughs> reduce that option time. But I don't want to go too far astray here. So again, you get your, say, $2,000 up front, and let's pretend you have a two-year option agreement. Well, now within two years, the company has to decide if they're going to what's called exercise the option and put a pipeline in. And if they're going to, then typically, typically the documents will say the company has to send you the check for the per foot price. So usually the, sm the first payment is much smaller and the second payment, let's pretend you got $30 a foot, you would get that typically typically that can change, but you get it either when they send you the notice that they're going to exercise the option, or maybe they pay you right before they start. It depends on the language, but there are two payments. First payment buys the company, we'll say two years to decide whether they want to use the agreement. Then after that, if they want to use the agreement, they have to pay you a second payment, which is kind of a, a balloon payment or much higher payment. If they do not elect to use the option, so they paid you up front, and now they've decided, yeah, we're not going to put the pipeline there. And listen, guys, that happens. That happens. That's why we want to make sure we're getting as much money as we can up front, and there's other reasons as well. But they decide they're not going to exercise the option or put a pipeline on the ground under the ground in your property. Well, then this agreement would end... And now there's no pipeline right away agreement. Way too many people think that when they sign a pipeline right of way agreement, they're guaranteed there's going to be a pipeline on the property and they're going to get a subsequent payment. That is not a guaranteed thing. That's not necessarily going to happen. So it gets back to 
We want to get that upfront money as high as we can. And there are ways that we can try to word and negotiate the contract in order to try to guarantee as best we can the subsequent payment to get more money up front, things like that. There's a lot of different things we can do. But that's the basics of a simple option agreement. Money up front buys the company an option, a period of time to decide whether they're going to use the agreement, install a pipeline. If they use it, they will pay you again and put a pipeline in the ground or more than one pipeline, depends on the agreement. Or if they decide they're not going to, then that agreement will terminate and no longer exists. Side note, if it's filed at the courthouse, you need to get it released or off of your title, but that's another topic for another day. So, all right, this is a good place to take our first break. Remember, you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark. I have not, do not, and will never represent oil or gas companies, only property owners, royalty owners, not companies. I'll be back after this break. You want to learn more about what we do, give us a call, 570 307 0702. We want to help you. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I got a lot to get to, so we're going to jump right into it. But first, remember, you can join me each and every week, and I hope you do, on this station at this time for All Things Marcellus. Been doing the show for seven years, and we're not stopping anytime soon. Okay, talking about pipeline right of way option agreements. And again, Stick with me because I love this topic and I love doing these shows. So we said pipeline option agreement real quick. Company gives you money up front and boy, five, six hundred dollars, my opinion, not enough, not enough. Negotiate, need to negotiate that, try to increase that money. Company gives you money up front and then once the, they buy essentially a period of time to decide if they're going to put the pipeline into the ground and use your agreement. If that option term is five years, to me, that's crazy. My clients don't agree to that. We generally only agree to a two-year option term. Anything above that, highly suspect. Again, not specific advice, but something to keep in mind. The longer the option, the worse it is for you, the landowner. Remember too, oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. We got to have a sign. We want to get your royalties. Hurry up, sign, sign, sign. Well, they want you to hurry up and sign, but then they want to have five years to decide if they're going to use it. Here's a quick side side note, sidebar. Um, companies will pressure you, landmen will pressure you on time. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up and get this. And then they sit on the document or sit on the power that they have under the document for years until they use it. But they want you to, it's the classic salesman thing. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Don't go see a lawyer. Don't go get any other information. Don't become informed. Here's a pen. Here's the paper. Hurry, hurry, sign. We'll make you rich. Think about that. Think about that. <laughs> you know, another quick side point. I saw some paperwork this week that someone asked me to look at, and they said that the person's lawyer, they're the landowner's lawyer, and the company wanted the paperwork all back next week and really putting pressure on. What well, was for a well pad? It was for a well pad that was very large. And the line literally that somebody else had told me was like, hurry up, get this back because uh, you'll be the clampets in no time. Well, the agreement itself says that the company has, I think it was six years to build the pad or not. Six years. Hurry, 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 hurry. Then we have six years whether we're going to do this or not. Well, in reading the document, no wonder why they want the person to hurry and not understand it because it's not to their benefit. You know, it's a very poorly written document that's very favorable to the company. So those are cases. It's very, very simple. We need to get you informed and need to get you that information. So be careful of the hurry, hurry, hurry. And then the company has years to undertake any activity. Think about it. It doesn't make much sense. It makes a lot of sense for them, not much sense for you. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Okay, so let's talk now about some meat and potatoes to these options. So I have here, as we do sometimes, a uh, an option agreement. An option agreement presented to people. This one happens to be very common in Tioga County. Very common, but again, just because if you're not in Tioga, don't think, oh, I'm not there. This doesn't apply to me. Pay attention. Same principles apply everywhere. So this is an option agreement. Now, this particular company, this is Howard Energy. This is Howard 
Energy. And what they do is they present you with an option agreement as a separate document. And then they simultaneously at the same time, give you a right of way agreement document, but you got to be careful. My clients I've said, made clear, no client of mine has ever signed this option agreement, nor will we, nor will we, I won't represent someone that's going to sign this option agreement. Now, if you already signed it and you need help, give us a call. We're here to help you. But if it is a new offer, my clients have not and will not sign that. And if they want to sign it, I just won't be their lawyer because it is highly problematic. So again, look, this isn't specific advice, but this is my opinion. So if you're out there and you're getting a Howard Energy offer, and I don't care who you're getting it from, but in this case, Howard Energy, and it's an option agreement, just think, hey, that guy on the radio had a lot of problems with this. Maybe I need to talk to him and understand why. Maybe I need to go back and listen to that radio show because I know he puts them all on pagasleaseattorney.com. I know he posts them and archives them on pipelineattorney.com. So I'm going to go learn more and I'm not going to just sign this. Why? Here's why. Paragraph one, grant of exclusive option states, owner, that being you, hereby unconditionally and irrevocably grants, bargains, sells, and conveys to, and in the company, the exclusive right and option to purchase from the landowner an easement on the property in accordance with the terms uh, and conditions of the right-of-way grant, which is the separate right-of-way agreement, and the addendum. Okay to be entered into by the parties. So this, this alone, I would never sign this. Me, if you want to, you can. I would never sign this document, nor will my clients as long as I represent them. So what this is saying then is, it's saying that you're entering into this, remember this is an option agreement, a separate document even. We don't do that, but some people do. It's an option agreement. So it's saying that we are now going to agree to enter into a pipeline right of way agreement with an addendum and that the easement agreement, this agreement is going to be entered into in the future. It's to be entered into. So you're going to enter into an option agreement. And so an agreement to enter into another agreement in the future. Well, we better know what that other agreement is. That makes sense. You want to say, okay, I'll agree to something in the future and have no idea what the heck that is going to be. So in fairness, it goes on to state that, and I'm going to paraphrase some, which pipeline right away agreement. So you're agreeing that you're going to enter into in the future to be entered into the, by the parties, which pipeline right away agreement shall contain provisions, meaning language and terms, substantially the same as those set forth in exhibit B. So what that means is you're going to typically be giving an option agreement and you're going to be given a pipeline right of way agreement and some addendum terms. And of course, if they're the ones offered by the company, there's a lot of calculation by the company as to why they're offering you those. I would never simply agree to the company offered addendum. That to me would be crazy. I wouldn't do it. So what happens here is they say, okay, we're going to give you this option agreement and we're going to attach. We're going to also simultaneously give you a pipeline right of way agreement and addendum. So when you enter into this option agreement, you better darn well understand this. It says that you're agreeing that you're going to enter into a future agreement and that agreement shall contain provisions substantially the same as what the pipeline right away agreement and addendum is that you're also reviewing at this time and signing. So they're giving you a pipeline right away agreement. They're giving you an option agreement. You're going to sign both of those when you sign and you're agreeing that in the future, this pipeline right away agreement that you have today, the future one, they're going to give you another one and it's not going to necessarily necessarily, it doesn't have to be the same. You should be, if, if I'm doing a good job, you should be scratching your heads right now saying, what in the heck is he talking about? So here's what I'm talking about. You, what they want you to do is enter into two separate agreements or sign two separate documents. 
an option agreement that says we have attached a pipeline right away agreement to this option agreement. You agree that if we decide to use the option agreement, you're now going to enter into a new, yet another pipeline right away agreement, which may be the same as the one you're currently looking at. However, however, it states right here that the new easement agreement, the new pipeline right away agreement, shall contain provisions substantially the same. So not necessarily the same, but substantially the same. Boy, your definition of substantially the same and the company's may be quite a bit different. So it goes on though. If that isn't bad enough, it goes on and says, and other such customary terms and conditions that are reasonably requested by the company. Meaning that, and there is no way around this, no way around it. Ask the land man, meaning that you sign this agreement, you have a pipeline right away agreement. You are not guaranteed that that will be the same agreement that's used in the future. You're told that it will be substantially the same. We don't know how different that may be, but you're also told that the company, listen to this, the company can add such other customary terms and conditions that are reasonably requested by the company. Well, what in the heck is that? What is that? Other reasonable and customary terms. So they can add things in the future. This isn't me surmising. This is reading from their document. How can you agree today to document you haven't even seen yet in the future? How can you agree to reasonably customary and other terms that the company may ask for or demand in the future when you haven't even seen them? Why aren't they included in this agreement? For just this reason alone, and it is an enormous reason, no client that I ever represent will sign one of these agreements. And if you're signing one, my opinion, you're making a big, big mistake. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. We're talking about, in this case, Howard Energy Pipeline right away option agreement. Don't like it, don't like it at all, and everyone who signs it, in my opinion, is making a big mistake. Because you are agreeing, you're agreeing to enter into a new, a separate document, a separate right away agreement in the future that you haven't even seen. Now, it's supposed to be substantially similar. We don't know what that means, what exactly is substantially similar. But also, they can add, and let me get this right, they can add such other customary terms and conditions that are reasonably requested by them. That's To me, that's nuts. That's nuts. But what's killing me is, is people are still signing these. We need to stop that. And I don't think you do. Like I said, none of my clients are signing them. So if you have that situation, give us a call. Like I say, do a review consultation. You know, figure, get this information, get specific advice. The radio show is not specific advice. Get specific advice. Regardless of the issue, you can call 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. If you're signing this agreement, my opinion, you're making a big, big mistake. Now, in some cases, and I talked about this, you know, you may have a chance with Howard Energy, they may not be exercising your option, meaning they may not be doing what they need to do in order to exercise the option, meaning lock this thing in into the future. And I had a case recently where we had a guy who, the company said, oh, okay, here's all this information. We've now exercised the option and we're going to put a pipeline in. And we did the old, uh, wait, not so fast. Uh, there are other requirements in this agreement that you must meet and you didn't meet them. So we're going to challenge you on that. And you might be able to get a really good, either knock out the agreement because they didn't meet their terms or renegotiate. So we don't want to just take whatever they send us, you may have renegotiation opportunities. And I suspect 
that, and if you're listening out there and you have a Howard Energy Pipeline right of way agreement and they have exercised that option, there's a, in my opinion, and I'm still looking at these, so I'm really interested to hear from you if you're in that situation because they may not have done that properly and they may not actually have a pipeline right of way agreement, which means you could either say, no, I don't want it, or you can say, I'm going to, I'll do it. But I'm, you got me last time. You're not going to get me this time. And I'm going to negotiate it. I'm going to get assistance. And I'm going to maximize this and make sure I get all the money I can. And make sure that I get as much protections as I can. And if you didn't have a lawyer who knew what they were doing the first time, be willing to bet you didn't maximize that agreement. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about exercising the options and some other just the enormous problems with this agreement we get back in the next section the next segment excuse me you're listening to all things marcellus with me attorney doug clark of the clark law firm call us anytime learn about what we do learn about reviews and consultations i have many clients all across pennsylvania many in tioga county we'd love to hear from you 570-307-0702 and stay tuned and make sure well make sure you join us each and every week at this time on this station and i'll be right back after this break Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus and take advantage of our websites for information, whether you're looking for representation, want to learn more about what I do, or if you want to just go and learn. Go check out PAGasLeaseAttorney.com. Check out PipelineAttorney.com. And remember, we have prior radio shows. been doing this show since 2010, over seven years. And we have many, many hours of shows available. And most of them are indexed, so you can go find a show that's right for you. All right, I want to get back in. We're talking about pipeline right-of-way option agreements. In this case, a Howard Energy option agreement. And if you have this, I would highly recommend that you give me a call, 570-307-0702, because our clients don't sign that, and I don't think you should either. Uh, so give us a call, learn about what we may be able to do for you, do a review and consultation, get information, get the information that the companies do not want you to know, and that the landman who works for the company, not you, the landowner, isn't going to tell you. It's the information that somebody working for you who knows what they're doing is going to give you to help you make the right decision. And look, I've represented clients who've signed hundreds of pipeline right-of-way agreements. This is what we do. So we make them as good as we can. We maximize, we use the leverage to maximize compensation, to maximize the language and the terms and the limited company's activity, and to make sure that you're getting the best possible agreement. And in some cases, some people say, you know what, I don't like this and I'm going to pass. But in most cases, we're able to reach an agreement. But again, every case is unique. And do this, the show is not specific advice. We need you to get specific advice, whether for me or someone else. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Now I want to get into what I started talking about the last segment, this whole how does the company exercise the option? So I want to stress, there, this can be done a lot of different ways. And if you're smart, if your lawyer is smart, they're going to negotiate this aspect of the agreement as well. We want to have you, if you're going to do a pipeline option agreement, we want to have you paid in order to exercise the option. The company must pay you in full within two years. We also want to make sure that they have to start work within a certain time frame, ideally two years. We want to make sure we're doing that. Different agreements have different ways to exercise the option. I want to focus, and again, this applies to everybody. Boy, if you're in Tioga County, if you have an agreement with Howard Energy, if you've entered into one, if you're thinking about it, or if you've been told that they've exercised the option, pay very close attention to what I'm about to tell you. So in their option agreement, it says, I'm going to paraphrase some too, it's a long provision, but it says that under the option agreement, the company shall have the right but not the obligation to exercise the option at any point in time during, in this case, a two-year term. So it says the company at any point can tell you, hey, we're going to go ahead and use this option agreement. But they have to do it within two years. So it says in the event that the company elects or decides to exercise their option, they have to give you, the property owner, option notice, it's called. 
And what does that include? Well, it has three different things that have to happen. Number one, the company has to tell you that they have chosen to do the option, to exercise the option. That's pretty simple. Hey, here's a letter. We're going to exercise the option. That's fine. They've covered number one. Number two, now remember, guys, please pay attention if you've had an option agreement with Howard Energy, whether they've already exercised it or not. If they have and they have not met these obligations that I'm telling you, call the office. We want to hear from you. 570-307-0702. You may not have an agreement. Them coming onto your property may be a trespass. You need to explore this as soon as possible. So, okay, again, Howard Energy tells you we're going to exercise this option, and they have three requirements in their agreement. Number one, to tell you, essentially, hey, we've elected to do this. Number two, they have to attach a copy of the easement, which is the pipeline right-of-way agreement and the addendum that you're going to use going forward. Remember how I said in the earlier section, when you sign the option agreement, you're also going to sign a pipeline right-of-way agreement and addendum. But that's not the guaranteed agreement that will actually be used. It may seem crazy. And to me, it does seem crazy. But the agreement you sign when you sign an option agreement is not necessarily the actual agreement that you're agreeing to in the future. So what do they say again? So now they're telling you, hey, we want to exercise the options. So they tell you, number one, that, hey, we've decided to do this. Number two, the company has to send you a copy of the new, new, new right-of-way agreement and addendum to be executed by the owner, being the property owner, which will contain terms substantially similar to those contained in your Exhibit B to the option agreement which was the documents that you saw, the right-of-way agreement and the addendum that was signed and was attached to your option agreement. Now, they're sending you an unsigned document, which is the pipeline agreement and the addendum, and it's going to be substantially similar, but it can be different. Substantially similar. Who knows what that is? Are you going to litigate it? Are you going to go in court and fight it? So if they want to change it, you say, I don't like that change. They say, no, this is substantially similar. What are you going to do? Says again then. So they're going to send you a new agreement for you to sign. New agreement for you to sign that's going to contain terms substantially similar to those that you've already seen. And again, and again, this is a different place in this document. It appears twice. That better be a sign that it's serious. It goes on to say, and other such terms and conditions that are reasonably requested by the company. Again, guys, this is not a joke. You're agreeing to an agreement. When you sign the option agreement, you're going to see a pipeline right-of-way agreement also. And you're going to sign that. And they're going to attach it, like staple it. I mean, physically staple it to the actual option agreement. And then when they tell you, we're going to exercise this option agreement, they are required to send you a new pipeline right-of-way agreement. And it it has to contain terms substantially similar to what you've already seen, but not the same terms. doesn't have to. It may, but it may not. The requirement is that that new agreement that you have to sign must contain terms substantially similar, but it goes on, and such other terms and conditions that are reasonably requested by the company. Well, who in the world knows what those are? So you are not, when you sign the option agreement and you sign a pipeline or right-of-way agreement today, and you think, okay, this is the agreement, they have two years, and they'll use this agreement. That is not... I repeat, that is not guaranteed. What is guaranteed is if they exercise and do it properly, that they have to send you a new document that is substantially similar to what you thought you were agreeing to, but that also may contain terms that are a little different and other such terms and conditions that are reasonably requested by the company. 
So who knows if you're hit with something that you really don't like and you didn't think you were agreeing to, but they say, well, no, that's substantially similar or no, those are other terms and conditions that we're requesting. And we see those as reasonable. Yeah, you may not, but hey, we do. We do. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station. So let me reset. So company is now Howard Energy notifying you, a landowner, hey, we're going to exercise this option. Please pay attention. If you think you're in this situation, I'd love to hear from you and love to make sure that your option was exercised properly. Because if it wasn't, your agreement very well may have terminated. And boy, that puts you in a very interesting situation. So pull your agreement and see what they did. Because when they want to exercise it, they must, number one, tell you we've elected to exercise the option. They must do that in writing. Number two, they must notify you in writing and send you a new right of way agreement for you to sign a new document, one that you have not signed before. So they have to send you a new one that contains substantially similar terms than what you've seen before, but it can also include new terms that you haven't seen before that are terms that the company says that they are reasonably requesting these other terms and conditions. That's scary. So again, they have to notify you that they're accepting the agreement. They have to then send you a new document to sign, which may or may not be the same document that you saw before. And that document is really important because that's the pipeline right of way agreement. And then finally, the third thing is they have to tell you, and this is where I think, I think the company's making mistakes here. And these, these are not like option <laughs> options. They're, they're not by like, well, a company has a choice. We can do this or we can do that. No, these are mandatory requirements. So it says then that the third thing they have to do is specify the date in which this pipeline right away agreement, the new document that you're sent that you haven't signed yet, it has to specify the date in which this right of way option or right away agreement is to be executed by you and returned back to the company which then also which shall also be the date in which this right of way agreement shall become effective. So the agreement doesn't become effective until you sign it and send it into the company. Remember, this may be two years after you sign the original option agreement. They're sending you a new document to sign that you may have never have seen before. You then sign this new document, send it back to the company, and that's when it becomes effective. Now, the company also goes on, and also they have a requirement that once they receive it, they have to sign it and then send you back a copy of this new agreement. And that's the actual agreement. But remember, that's the actual right-of-way agreement. But that's an agreement you may never have seen before. Guys, if you have been notified by Howard Energy and they did not meet these requirements, in my opinion, there's a really good chance that you don't have a pipeline right-of-way agreement on your property. Now, that can be a good thing because you could simply say no, or you could say, hey, you didn't meet the terms. These are mandatory obligations, and therefore, you have no agreement. So if you're going to want to do this, yeah, we're gonna, we can maybe do this, but you're going to have to pay more money, and you're going to have to negotiate the language. Please check and see how your agreement how if it was properly exercised did they send you new documents to sign with a date to return it and then sign and return those documents did that occur that's very very important so if you're in that situation give us a call love to hear from you 570-307-0702 570-307-0702 listening to all things marcellus with me attorney doug clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you tune in each and every week at this time on this station. For All Things Marcellus, if you missed today's show or if you missed shows over the past several years, go to the websites. If you want information, you want to learn more about me, you want to learn more about what we do at the Clark Law Firm, Go to pagasleaseattorney.com. Go to pipelineattorney.com. If you have a Howard Energy option agreement or any pipeline right-of-way agreement anywhere in Pennsylvania 
encourage you, give us a call, 570-307-0702. Learn about our review and consultation services, the negotiation services, and see if we can help you. Give us a call, no matter where you're located, give us a call, 570-307-0702. I have a bunch of clients in Tioga County now. I've represented many, many clients there. I've worked on this right-of-way option agreement. We have looked at this method of exercising option. And if you have an option agreement with Howard Energy and they say, hey, we've exercised it, I would encourage you also check out your agreement, give us a call, see if they did what they're supposed to do, and see if they really have an agreement. And if they don't, that puts you in a very interesting situation. So, you know, they're going to hold you to your contract. You hold them to their contract. It's only fair. And it may be the opportunity for you to get more money, maybe substantially more money. And it may be your opportunity to get a second bite of the negotiation apple to say, hey, you know what? You got me the first time. I didn't have an attorney who knew what they were doing. I wasn't prepared. Uh, I was promised all this money. It's obviously not happened yet. And so, therefore, I'm smarter now and I'm not going to repeat those mistakes. So give us a call. Love to hear from you. And we want to hold these guys to these agreements. They're holding you to bad agreements. We need to hold them to the agreements and obligations that they wrote. They wrote this document. You didn't. I didn't. They did. They need to meet the obligations. We can't let these guys just steamroll the landowner. We need to make sure that we're protecting ourselves and we're sticking up for ourselves and saying, no, you're not going to just do whatever you want to do. We have contracts. Hopefully we have contracts that we negotiated to prevent this steamrolling, which is occurring many, many times all over Pennsylvania. So we got to stop it. And if you are in this situation, give us a call. We want to help you. 570-307-0702 listening to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Now, I have to get to this in this show. It's on pipelines and it's something that it is so important. And you'll hear me say, look, we're going to give you the information that you need to know that's valuable to you as the property owner. We're going to give you this information because we're here for you and the land man who works for the company and not you, the land owner, may not give you this information. So we need to give it to you. Here is an enormous piece of information for every single person in gas areas. If you are presented with a pipeline right away agreement, you need to be getting assistance again from someone who knows what they're doing. One of the biggest problems that I see, and I see it all the time, is people are presented with pipeline right-of-way agreements and don't believe they have the ability to say no. They think that they have to. Maybe they're given the impression that if they don't sign, the company will use eminent domain. Highly unlikely. Those are only certain projects. Very unlikely. Often, the person thinks, well, if I don't sign... Well, then they're just going to put it in anyway under the lease rights, and I'm not going to get paid a higher amount of money. In most cases I see, and I'm talking about by far the most cases that I see, that is absolutely not what you would expect if you didn't sign the agreement. There's many different reasons for that. But just because you have a gas lease doesn't mean that you need to sign a pipeline right-of-way agreement. And many, many times, if you say, no, I'm not going to agree to the pipeline because you don't want to have the pipeline on your property, well, the company is not going to install the pipeline on your property, even if you have a gas lease. The critical thing is you need specific advice on this. This isn't specific advice, but I'm telling you, too many times people wrongly believe if they do not sign the pipeline right-of-way agreement, they're going to end up with a pipeline anyway. And they're not going to get paid the higher amount of money. The company will say, well, we'll just put it in under your lease. Well, if they do so, there may be limitations in your lease. But this, just think about this. And there's way more. It gets very complicated. But think about this part. If a company installs a pipeline 
under your lease that you don't agree to a new pipeline agreement and they put it in under your gas lease. Well, what happens when your gas lease ends? Most likely the pipeline has to be done. And in the vast majority of pipelines that we see, the company does not want the pipeline rights to end when your gas lease ends. So if you don't sign a pipeline right away agreement, which then gives the company the ability to have the pipeline there well beyond centuries, usually beyond the expiration of your gas lease, the company is not going to install the pipeline on that property if they're going to lose the pipeline when the gas lease ends. So that's a very powerful hidden leverage point that is in many of these cases. And the company land that I don't think are telling people this. And we need you to know this. The other thing is, yes, we need pipelines to get the gas out to market and to get you royalties. But you know what, guys? So does the gas company. And that's why I've seen gas companies pay $1,000 a foot and more for pipeline right-of-way agreements on occasion. Hundreds of dollars a foot on many occasions. $50, $60 a foot on many, 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 many occasions. And even per pipeline. These are the things that you have to get independent advice from somebody working for you not somebody working for the gas company. So I was saying, yeah, the, we need to get the gas to market for you to get royalty money. But you know who else needs that too? You have 12.5%, maybe you have 15% royalty. Well, who has the 85% royalty? Who has that part of it? Well, the company does. And you can be darn well sure those pipelines are going to get into the ground one way or the other. So if they can't get you to sign their measly $15 a foot pipeline right of way agreement, or God forbid less, they're going to have to pay more. They're going to pay more. But as long as people keep taking and believing this idea, I don't have a choice. This is all the company pays. That's what the landman who works for the company told me. Well, then they're going to keep trying to give you $15 a foot for horrible pipeline agreements that are written in complete favor of the company and not in favor of you. That's what you're going to see. We need to change that. If somebody else is going to be taken advantage of, well, we can't help that, but we can help what happens to us. And we're not going to be taken advantage of. We're going to call and get a review and consultation. We're going to find out what we need to know from our side. And we're going to realize that we need to stop signing bad agreements and trusting and relying on the company employee, the company landman, to educate and inform you. We need to get our own advice. I truly believe that every landowner who's seriously considering a pipeline right of way option agreement should have a pipeline review and consultation. It usually takes one to two hours, and we can do it. You can be located anywhere in the country. We're doing with people all across Pennsylvania. Do many of them in Tioga County, do them though in the west, southwestern part, everywhere in Pennsylvania. You should have a review and consultation and learn what you need to know and then get a plan on how to go forward. Get the information that you need to know. And there's resources out there. You can give us a call, 570-307-0702. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station. And remember, stop signing bad agreements and the company landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. Have a great week, everyone.